But now, just about an hour ago, I chatted with the former Bank of England Governor Mark Carney. I began by asking him what role he thinks banks can and should be playing in the battle against global warming. Well, I, first thing to recognise is this is a big change for our economy in the UK uh, and globally. And to give a sense of the orders of magnitude, it's measured in the trillions of pounds every year of investment that's required. And rough rule of thumb... And required into technologies that combat global in, warming. Is that what you're well, talking about? not just into technologies, but actually proven technologies like wind, um, solar power, uh, electric vehicles, and actually just producing them, producing the capacity... Uh, to make those technologies, put them in the ground, connect them to the grid so we can lead a cleaner life. So that's about twice as much investment as we normally have. And we're going to need that uh, well into the next few decades. And of course, and that's where... to hit net zero. To hit net zero, that's we've got to have that's twice that's as much investment as normal simply in those technologies. That's exactly right. And, uh, and, and on top of that, by the way, Rob, Robert, we'll need some... Uh, venture capital and some innovators to come up with some of those exciting new technologies as well, like hydrogen and, and, and other things. But what do we need banks for? Well, we need banks to help finance uh, the creation of, uh, you know, uh, the prime minister has an objective that the UK will be the Saudi Arabia of wind. That's, that's a possibility, but they'll need financing for that. Um, we might need uh, financing for uh, buying, a, buying an electric vehicle um, and the leasing for that. Uh, we'll need financing just to put in place much cleaner, greener, uh, more effective technologies. And for that, we need banks. That's where the money is, as uh, John Derringer used to say. Um, uh, but we also need banks that are focused on the same thing the country is focused on, which is net zero. So what's been important is not just that the banks have the money, but that they're putting the money to work uh, to help accomplish what we all want. That's one side of it. But yeah. the other side of it, of course, is that there are some activities, some businesses that damage the planet. And the question is, how do you persuade banks not to finance those that are increasing global warming? That's right. And there's, it's not just some, as you know, uh, Robert, there's a lot of activities, many things we all do, uh, ultimately damage the planet. And, and the challenge is to shift or to use the word transition from what we're doing today to where we need to get to tomorrow. And it is, it's tricky uh, for but the how banks. How do you get to... banks to face up to the risks of financing businesses that not only, you know, damage us, but ultimately could yeah. damage them? They might not get their money back. Uh, that's absolutely right. And the first is to say, actually, you are running uh, tremendous risks. If you just keep with business as usual, if you keep lending into... Uh, an automaker that only makes uh, cars that run on petrol, ultimately that automaker is going to be out of business because everything's going to run on electricity. Or if you only f uh, finance um, gas-fired power stations, ultimately that will also be out of business. So the banks are at risk here if we succeed with where we want to go. And here's the, a couple of ways we do it. One of the things that the Bank of England is doing is it's running a stress test. Now that's a fancy word, but basically what it's saying to the bank is, well, what are your loans? If you kept the loans you have today, what are they going to look like in 2030 when the UK has achieved its objective of reducing uh, greenhouse gases by 68% based on uh, 2005 levels? Uh, now, at that point, there'll be a whole host of different regulations. There'll be new technologies. There'll be new competitors, et cetera. If you keep lending to the people as they are today, you're not going to get all your money back. Do you know what that number is and what's your strategy in order to shift it? So that's one way of bringing that future to the present. Uh, and that's that's in part of what the Bank of England's doing. And, you know, let's be fair to the banks as well. They're doing that of their own accord because they want to stay in business and they want to lend to the industries of the future. Um, now, if, if you look at how we get to net zero, somebody like Bill Gates believes it can all essentially be done by getting the right pricing for carbon, encouraging the right kind of technologies. We don't actually have to change our behaviour and governments don't have to force us to behave differently. Do you agree with Gates that essentially markets can solve all this? I don't think, no, I don't agree markets can solve all this. I'm not sure exactly that Bill, would, Bill Gates would say that uh, markets can solve all this. We need, uh, we need three things. Um, we need uh, the technologies we talked about a moment ago. Some of them are proven, like uh, offshore wind in the UK. That works. That's economic. You can make a profit. You can have a cleaner, cleaner electricity in the country as a result of it. Um, but we need progress on the technologies of the future. I mentioned hydrogen a moment ago. We need 
what's called sustainable aviation fuel. We need fuel for planes if we're going to keep flying uh, that ultimately has a zero carbon footprint or ways to have a zero carbon footprint for that. There's ways to do that theoretically, conceptually, but not practically, profitably, economically today. So we need a lot of money to be invested in that. But Bill should Gates we be flying others. less now? Uh, we should be taking into account the impact of our flying on the planet now. Um, and, and that's therefore started, pushing up the tax on flying. Uh, you push up the tax on flying, you push up uh, the cost on transport, and that's in part what putting a price on carbon is. But can I make an important point? I mentioned a moment ago the word transition. Mm. Uh, you know, we're not going to change overnight. Um, we need to see where the economy is going, the technologies are going, what's not going to work tomorrow. Uh, and adjust as quickly as we can into that. Part of that, and this was the third leg, you need, you need engineering, you need innovators, the first leg, you need finance, the banks we were talking about, all aspects of finance, our pension funds, for example. And the third leg is you need government to do its job. And, um, and part of that is policies like a price on carbon that goes up over time. It's, uh, for example, in the UK, uh, we won't uh, be able to buy a new, a new, petrol car or a diesel car from 2030. They'll have to be zero emission vehicles from that point. That sends a very clear signal to those engineers, those innovators, and yes, the banks and those financiers, what they should be investing in today in order to give us the, the future that we, uh, we need. So you think climate change, and I think many people would agree with you, is worse than this awful coronavirus crisis we've been through. Are we moving first enough to tackle climate change? Well, we certainly haven't been. Uh, we are now, and I, I'm not sure we need to compare the relativities of the of the crises. The Corona crisis has been awful, and uh, full credit to the people of the United Kingdom and their response to it. Uh, and I'm glad to see light at the end of the tunnel there, um, even on even though I'm viewing it from thousands of miles away. Um, the uh, we uh, we've left it very late on climate change, um, and uh, it is now a central issue for the banks we were talking about. It's one of the most important strategic issues for them, for our biggest companies, for governments. And, and the reason for that is because people have had enough. People want us to deal with it. And, um, and the system is swinging into action. It's essential that we take advantage of this um, and, and fulfill those expectations in Glasgow and then uh, implement beyond. And when I say Glasgow for the big climate meeting in November is what I mean. Mark Carney, great to see you as always. Thank you, Robert.